Welcome. Okay, Doug. So welcome everyone to today's exciting session. And um, we're discussing a really important topic, which is, is the golf swing basically is it a push or a pull? Um, and Peter, a very important part because it, it has created a lot of confusion in golf, uh, this exact subject. And I see you're at a special venue there in Melbourne. Yeah, I'm at uh, Ryan Ferguson's indoor golf studio out here in East Keelor, just not far from Tullamarine Airport, Melbourne. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's great to be here. Ryan's one of the great club fitters uh, in Australia. He and I were very much involved in the early days of educating club fitting here in Australia, but uh, he's got his teaching studio and uh, it's always great now with simulators that you can really exactly see what's going on with the, uh, with a swing path uh, and the club face and the club SP, angle of attack, all these things. But none of that matters if you can't control the club. So we're going to discuss today why you need to understand how to push correctly with your hands to control not only the club, but to control your arms and your body. So I was going to throw this Frisbee. It's a, it'd be a pushing action. Uh, it wouldn't be a pulling action. It has to be a, the release has to be a push. So anyway, all smiles <laughs> today. You know, the beautiful thing about, um, about this kind of format we've got people from all around the world joining in and uh it's amazing uh how we can all get together and and, and learn it's it's fantastic so let's get started and i'll just share my screen here and um let's have a look at um first of all what is a push and pull in the golf swing and we, if we define them as a push is a force exerted away from oneself uh, or a pull is a force exerted towards oneself so, Pete, just uh, just want to summarise um, those definitions. Okay, yes. Just to clarify, when you move your hands together, that's a pushing action. If you move them apart, we'd say they're pulling. So when the left hand moves towards the ball's target, that's a pulling action. When the right hand moves away from the target, that's, that's a pulling action. And whenever you pull on something, you lose the feel. So... I'm holding the golf club at the moment, but if I pull my hands apart, I lose the feel of the club. I lose the club. So ultimately and ultimately is pushing is needed to give control over this golf club. Right from the grip to the very beginning of the swing all to the end. So what we were able to do is to basically uh, dispel the illusion of what it looks like which is it looks like a pulling action. Uh, and good golfers tell you what they feel when they when they hit the ball. They feel a pulling in the, the left side. As the harder they hit, the more they feel the pull. That's the effect, not the cause. And it's been misunderstood for a long time that you have to pull on the club. Uh, we'll show you now in this little segment that it's actually the correct pushing with the hands that will give you that feeling, but also will give you control over the golf club. So you can, you can get the club on the right path from the very start, very end of the sun. And I, I can remember, Pete, uh, when we were at the um, PGA Teaching Conference in America, um, when Michael Reed was, was up talking about that, you know, the, the intention is a throw, but but the feeling is, is they this pulling pulling feeling as a result of throwing or pushing yeah no it's it's been a, a source of confusion for the golfing world until about 1992 when we when we looked at the opposite of what had been being taught and that was at that stage it was always about delaying the hit drag delaying the hit pulling the club down to the ball and then releasing at the bottom but we once we discovered that the more you push, the more it actually, you, you won, you get the late hit angles, you get the club on the right path, so, and you can control the impact a lot easier. So if I go like this, stay down, 
So it's not going to come up on the screen, I don't think. Uh, please hit OK. So I'm not nice in the shot, right area. But uh, oh, here I am. OK. Back to the back to you, Chris. All right. So um, yeah, let's have a look at what causes the illusion that the golf swing looks like a pull. Um, on slow motion video, and slow motion video has, has been very good, um, but this is one area where people misunderstand. On, on slow motion video, the club is lagging behind the hands, and that's the effect we want it. We want to have. We want to want it to look like that. But the feel is a very different feel to get that look. Um, through the right intention of the direction of force, the club head and hands will push into line at the right point, which is the bottom of the arc of the swing, which is just after the um, after the impact of the ball. Um, and through understanding pushing of your hands, you will create the right angles needed. Uh, Pete, just uh, fill us in on these points. Okay, well, just to highlight that, uh, I've got a teaching aid called the Orange Whip. It's got a nice bit of whip in the shaft. Now, when I swing slowly, the angles that, that, I, that I, I, they, I lose the angle between the shaft, the club shaft and the left arm early in the swing. So when I swing nice and slow, the club shaft goes in line back here. And of course, everyone that wants power says, well, that's no good, that's, that's throw away. But now if I, Add a little bit of speed, and you would a slow motion this swing down. What you would see would be a lot of stress, and, and, and it would be late until my right arm got fully extended. And once it got fully extended, that this, this release angle would happen, providing I'm throwing the club in the correct direction. If, if I throw it in the wrong direction, We'd say that's casting. So if you're attempting to throw the club head down the target line from the top, you get you lose the angle. So it's what actually causes the late hit angle to happen when you're throwing is to throw in the correct direction. So if you looked at that in slow motion, what you'll see is back here, this club is really bending and going in this way, and the late hit. The release all happens down at the very bottom where you want it to happen. If you do it correctly, you'll feel the heaviness of that club head. And invariably, it feels you can feel the, the pressure in those muscles. The feeling of pulling in the muscles is the result of the correct hands pushing the club head. Throwing, throwing this end of the, which would be the equals the club head, down and out into the golf ball. And that requires you to understand that golf is a two target game. It's not, you're not trying to make the club head I'll go back to a golf club. You're definitely not wanting the club head to be throwing down the target line too soon. By throwing the club head at the ball, in that direction, what will happen is I'll get the late hit angles. So I need my, my buddy here to find the ball. Okay, might have it in the right place now. Right, it's ready. So if you slow motion that down, what you would have seen, or you will see, is the club coming from this angle down and out. It's not coming out and over. That would be throw away. This is the, this is the A to B throw. So here we go. I think I'm in position. I'll see what happens. I'll try this one. You need to play the ball in a right position. I agree. So. Not going to show up on the screen here, but uh, you'll be able to see it in slow motion if you speak. when we replay this uh, video. You'll see that the angle. Uh, I can't hit one this way because I haven't got a net to hit into. But 
the better I throw up and down, swing over the top of this ball, I hope. So when I throw the club head, the faster I throw in that direction, what will happen is the angles will be here. And uh, basically the push concept was required to do that. Uh, there's one other thing I'd like to highlight here, Chris, because I was talking to Robert Allenby a couple of days ago at the Australian Open practice round. And he informed me that both he and Stuart Appleby have had uh, serious back problems. Stuart Appleby was out for three years uh, with an operation on his back. Jason Day has, uh, has back issues. And uh, Cole Swatton, Jason's coach and caddy, said that a large percentage of the PGA Tour pros have got uh, some sort of back problems. Well, my realization is that most golfers are bit, we're all taught that you move the club away with either your arms or your shoulders, uh, or you set the wrist angle early, and that, that's a pulling action. Um, Pete, can you just unmute yourself there? Sorry, buddy. Um... Yeah, it's just gone on mute. If you can just unmute yourself, that'd be good. So, don't know how that happened. Wasn't near it, but can you hear me now? I got you. Yep, all good. Probably this. This is a big revelation. Most back issues in golf occur because of a poor start to the backswing. When you start back with a pulling action, by either using your wrist in a pulling way, which would be this way, or you move your shoulders and arms and try to swing with the arm and shoulder take away. What happens to the lower body is it doesn't want to go in that direction. It actually wants to go the reverse way. I'm just going to put the club here just to show that someone has swiveled this here. So as I push back, I'm trying to push the club head, the bottom end here back. You'll see that the lower body is going the wrong way. So if you were to hit even 20 or 30 balls with that sort of action, you'll start to feel strain in the back. And that's what is at the source of a lot of bad backs in golf. If you swing the way we would like you to do it, which is a pushing action. So to push back, what I need to do is I need to slightly resist with the right hand. I push the left wrist against it. And when I do that, not only will I get a good shoulder turn early, but more importantly, what will happen is the hips will go this way first. And then I'll have a back sling, and then I'll, I'll actually have a back swing right from the very beginning. I don't have to manipulate the club. And I, if I pull it back, <clears throat> my lower body's jammed. Hips are going one way, shoulders going the other. The back gets the stress. If I push, I load the lower body, the upper body, the shoulders are wound up by the swinging club head, and you get just a, a good natural coiling without overstraining the, the back. So this concept or the idea of pushing is really great value. It'll help you get your swing easily on the right path, but also it'll allow you to stay in balance and stay centered. So when I swing like this, when I push, the, the swing is very effortless in the back swing. And then the down swing, it's back a sling back and a throw down. So if I get that action where I'm pushing right from the very beginning, I'm pushing left against right, the golf swing just winds and unwinds in a natural way. You get effortless power rather than powerless effort. And there's a lot less stress on the body, especially the back.
So I'm back to you, Chris. Literally back. Literally back. Oh, sorry, just got to kind of start up in the background here. But why? Uh, let's have a look at why pulling causes out of alignment conditions and pushing creates better ball compression. So first. First of all, there are many ways to pull things out of line, but one way to push in line. Yes, sir. And the second one is understanding how to use the hands in both the start of the swing for connection and downswing into and through the impact. Um, Pete, just want to share with us those, those um, little things about pulling and pushing in alignment, out of alignment, yeah, how it works. Okay, well, I have a coin here. And this is the coin test. I put one about about eight inches, uh, twenty centimeters, thirty centimeters back of the ball. And just to show you which gives you the widest arc on the on the a nice even circular motion path versus one that gets a little bit inside a bit or a bit outside too easily. If I start away, just taking the wrists using my hands. And there are ideas out there that you should start load your wrists and then make your back swing. Now, there's no way that I can hit that coin, even if I drop my head down, I just can't get to the coin. Now, if I pull the club away with the arms and shoulders, again, hardly can touch that coin. I really have to go down. So pulling, I can't get the wide arc. Whereas if I push on the handle and get the hips to work, that coin gets knocked away very easily. If I do it from this other angle, the difference in starting of the swing. So you can see that coin's quite a ways back there. Now, Nice and relaxed, set up, and when I push, easy. So that's when the handle ever so slightly leads. Welcome, Bertie. Okay, come in, bud. How are you doing? Come into the action. Oh, we have a we have a little VIP guest here. Yeah. 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 Brian. Yeah, Brian Ferguson making his entrance. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. So uh, this is Brian's place. So we're very happy to be here. And uh, uh, we, we're just into this, Brian. We're just now just showing why the start of the swing, if you pull the club away, which is by definition when the right hand lifts it this way, or when the arms and shoulders move, even when you push with the arms and shoulders, there's no way you can keep the club head low, even if your head moves down. But if I push and I let the hip work first, you can hear that coin gets hit quite easily. Okay, so... And, and through the impact area, Pete, how, how does uh, pushing versus pulling work? And, you know, pushing makes things go into line much better. We're pulling, there's a few unknowns, isn't it? Well, I'm not going to hit it this way because there's a, a, a foresight uh, GC quad just sitting there. So I'll go this other way. Uh, first of all, I've, I've got a coin back there and I'll, I'll have a coin in front. Now, I put the coin in front about a hand span in front. Now, when you pull the clock back, nothing. Now, if I'm going to hit this ball, I'm going to pull. I'm going to see what happens when I pull on this. Pulling tends to bring us up out of the shot. Now, this time, I'm going to put the push on and the coin in front's about six inches in front. I hope it doesn't uh, go too far. Fergie. Uh, I've got mine on. Yes, on mine. Okay, so I'm going to sit 
I got a dollar to go down the fairway here. Uh, but it's quite interesting how deep the club hit stays through the ball when you really are pushing deep into the shot. Just a little bit nice and relaxed. I noticed, that, I noticed how, how you kept your, your eye on the dollar rather than the ball there, Pete. You're interested in where the dollar went. Well, I, I got my dollar back. Okay, that's that's good. We're, we're glad. I'm going to be bad. Um, great. So, so as far as pushing versus pulling down at the impact, um, Pete, just, just share with us some, and maybe Brian, I can uh, have a word or two as well there. Okay, oh, Brian's going to come back. Okay, um, Pete. So just demonstrate from the front view, just just the pushing versus pulling. Um, that'd be great. Um, just okay. as far as pulling out of line, there's many ways to pull out of line, but one way to push in the line. That's the advantage. Yeah, when you pull the club, if I if I start with the shoulders, which is quite a a traditional way of starting the swing, arms and shoulders. They like start as there. As, in, 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 as far as impact goes, yeah. Well, as as far as impact goes, if I pull on the club, trying to pull it down, invariably I'll pull up out of it. To hit the golf ball effectively, it's so important that you are hitting down through the ball. And this action, just by definition, you're moving something away. That's a pushing action. If I bring it towards me, that's a pulling action. So I don't want to pull apart, but I don't want to pull the club head in, in either. I want to be able to push the club head through the ball. So there's a dress, there's the beginning of the impact zone. And then as I push down, the club head's still on the ground or close to the ground, way out after the ball's been hit. So you get that better what we call sustaining the line of compression on that golf ball. And that's what gets the backspin as well as the distance and the direction in. So pushing is the way to go. Uh, and understanding educated hands, it's all about knowing how to push with your hands to control the club. But also when you push the hand one against the other, you connect the body pivot to the hand action and the arms get connected to your body rather than pulled away. So pushing right from the start, when you push down, your left arm goes straight. When you push on the side, your right arm kicks in. So your, your upper arms are very much connected. And then all you do is change the wrist angle ever so slightly and the pivot of the hips works. If I sat, I've got a, a swivel chair here. Pretty good swivel. So if I sat up on this and I push, when I push the hips, the hips, the hips get a good head start and they, they sling the club away. If I pull, just it's a real strain on the arms, the shoulders, the back. If I pull through, this is quite often a lot of people think, oh, my hips stall going through the ball. I just can't clear my left hip. Well, as soon as you push, the hip clears as a result of the correct hand action. The hands drive the hips. The hips do not drive the hands. It's a, it's a chicken and the egg deal. And a lot of, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of science uh, that they measure ground forces and all these uh, different effects. But the ground force, the force you feel from the ground up is controlled by the way you use your hands. The harder I throw, the faster I throw, the hip just turns as a result effortlessly and fast. If I pull, I get it's a blockage. And uh, that's when you get, again, inconsistent bottom of the swing, but also 
uh, extra strain on the joints, especially the back, sometimes the knees, quite often the hips. So, you know, any anyone that's got a hip issue or a back issue, it's really worth understanding what we've discovered here and how to push with the hands correctly to not only control the golf club, but to control how the arms and the body will coordinate with the hands to give you the maximum control and power on the golf shot. Yeah, very good, Pete. Um, that was an excellent little session today, um, push versus pull. Uh, just that concept can, you know, transform form golfers and it has around the world, you know, just the idea of just pushing or throwing the club down into the ball has freed up a lot of golfers. Um, but for those that are new here, if, if you're interested, some of you are already in our program, Breaking 80 program, but, um, you know, join us on the Breaking 80 program. It's really for anyone that uh, wants to work towards that 80 mark and beyond. Um, even if you're shooting over 100, it's quite good. But anyway, we'll send you some details if you're not yet part of it. Otherwise, uh, thanks, everyone. And um, we look forward to seeing you uh, in the next session. Thanks very much, Peter, and special guest Ian. And, and I, I know Brian's gone inside there, but thank Brian for the use of his um, of his uh, indoor studio. Yeah, it's great. All right. Thanks, thanks everyone. Crocs. Thanks, Crocs. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. See you on the leaderboard, okay? Okay, bye.